So we're on track to push the world back to a climate that we haven't seen for 50 million years and do so just within our kids' lifetimes. I'm a paleontologist and I use fossils that we extract from deep sea sediments uh, to reconstruct what the ancient world looked like. In fact, in the summer of 2012, I led an international expedition to the area where the Titanic sank off of Newfoundland and we were doing scientific drilling to understand what the ancient greenhouse world looked like. And we've just released some of the results of that study. So we found that that ancient greenhouse world was essentially a hot tub. Uh, the tropical oceans were about 35 degrees centigrade, uh, and the poles were also a relatively balmy uh, 12 degrees centigrade, uh, well above the freezing temperatures that we observe today. We found that coral reefs didn't like the greenhouse world very much. In fact, there's a period of about 15 million years where we have what we call the reef gap, where there are no large coral algal reefs anywhere on Earth. During that time, the reefs were replaced by mounds of an uh, organism called a numulite, and these are basically animals that farmed algae for a living. But they formed piles of essentially gravel on the seafloor. I think of it as being like yard gravel without any sort of three-dimensional structure. And that's very different than we have with a modern coral reef, where you have lots of uh, sort of apartment blocks, lots of complexity inside of the reef corals, where lots of animals can live. So in the time of the Numulites, presumably we didn't have all of that kind of reef complexity that we have in modern reefs today. Another lesson of the warm oceans of the greenhouse world is that they supported much uh, smaller algae than the cold oceans of the modern world. This difference in the size of the algae means that food chains of the past were not able to support as abundant uh, large animals in the oceans as they do now. So things like sharks and whales, seabirds, seals, things like that, all these charismatic organisms that we care about, had a hard time finding lunch 50 million years ago. The greenhouse world is not a perfect analog for what might be coming up in the future. Indeed, a better example is something called the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM for short, an event uh, about 56 million years ago that lasted roughly 200,000 years. Now recently my colleagues and I have used sophisticated climate models to project into the future what might happen if we were to burn up about half of the sort of reservoir of fossil fuels that we have available to us. And what we find is that the ecological disruption uh, lasts something like uh, maybe oh, 20,000 years or so, uh, and then there is a recognizable human fingerprint of our fossil fuel era that lasts another 100,000 years. So one big surprise to me of our study was that if we were to wait just 80 years into the future before dealing with the global change problem, um, the effects on planet Earth are vastly larger than they are if we deal with the problem today.